All right, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahabaka Kodash, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, Son's name is Yahweh Shai, in who I reverence and honors the apostles that are in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters that are listening and also learning in hopes of being saved within these last days. All right. And this lesson is going to be based on that Jezebel overthrowing narcissistic, whether it be covert or right in your face, mostly it's covert, narcissism, which is a very, 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 very dangerous spirit. So we're going to start from Timothy. There's a lot to go into. Right? I never knew these things when I was younger. I never knew what a narcissist was. Right? But as you... And you know what? Really, it's just... It's a demon. Right? That's why it has a demon attached to it. It's a Jezebel spirit. And the Jezebel seeks to overthrow, dominate, control. And even if she can kill. And this spirit ain't just associated with women. It's mostly women, but a lot of men have that Jezebel spirit, a woman's spirit. <laughs> Bear with just a minute. So we're going to go to it. Bear with just a minute. And Lord willing, this will be edifying. Let's go to Timothy's. Right, because this is some real stuff. This ain't a lie. This is real. These things are going on. You've got people, they can't, they can't rest. Unless they control someone, unless they feel they have some type of control, right? Unless they feel dominant. It's really an insecurity, right? And that's what you'll find in that in truth. A lot of people are insecure. Let's go to First Timothy, actually, Second Timothy 3. There is no also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times goes into cautionary, dangerous times. We're in them times now. You don't really want to be amongst too much people, right? And it's going to let you know why. Verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Scriptures say it. Lovers of their own selves. It's all about them. That's what narcissism is. It's self-loving. Which obviously you're supposed to love. There is an amount of self-love you're supposed to have. But I'm talking about complete, full-blown out. You're all about yourself. Right? See, lovers of themselves, their own selves. What you can do for them. Right? They won't, they won't meet you halfway. You have people out there in this world. What you can do for them. And if you can't do nothing for them, if they think they can't get nothing out of you, then they seek to destroy you. That's a wicked spirit. If I ever do something for someone... I'm not, ex I'm not really expecting the same thing. I wouldn't mind, but I'm not expecting the same thing. That's why you have individuals that are pure in heart. You have to talk about pure in mind. That's someone that's pure in mind. That's someone without any guile. That's someone without any ulterior motive. So you have those that are lovers of their own selves. It's about them. And if you don't fit into their picture, if, you, if you're not... Um, if they can't walk all over you, then it's like, yeah, they don't like you. That's a lot. Right? So you've got to look for these traits. Covetous. Right? Very, very dangerous. And we're gonna go into kick we're gonna go into kings as well, first kings, right? About covetousness. Covetousness is you designing what somebody else wants. We're in a very, very dangerous time. It's like if you have anything nice. You have a gift. It's so bad. You can't even declare it to everyone. Because demons come out of the woodworks. And they want what you have. And they're willing to do anything. Anything to get it. Anything. Covetous is you desiring what somebody else has. You covet someone. Could be their woman. It could be a house. Even people do that with your house. Even people do that. You, you might have a nice house or whatever. And I flat, 
people would do anything to to get that if they're jealous. You can't put it past these people. Right? Bolsters. People that boast of themselves. And these are all the traits of a narc. Proud. A narc, yes, they're really proud. They think they're smart, but really they're dumb, they're insecure. Right? They can't really think for themselves. Right? They've got an inflated ego. Right? They think they're really more important than everybody else. Blasphemous. Right? A lot of narcs don't believe in the scriptures because they believe in themselves. Disobedient to parents. Right? And that stems from what? Their upbringing. Right? A lot of narcissists, they were abused when they were what? Young. Mentally. Right? Mentally. That's why they become that. Because they were treated that way. So they project it onto others. And it says, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Right? You, you, you won't have a thank you from these type of individuals. And they're unholy. Without natural affection. Right? True love. Right? True straighters. Right? They can't they can't they can't keep a promise. And I wouldn't keep a if you can't if you can't keep a promise, don't make a promise at all. False accusers. And that's something they thrive off as well. Right? Like I said, if they can't control you, they will they will speak evil upon your name. False accuse you. Right? Incontinent. They're not disciplined. Fierce. Right? In other words, brutish. Despises of those that are good. Look, you can't tell me this don't fit narcissism today. Right? Traitors. And it's a, so like it says despise of those that are good. Because you, you have the 144,000, including the multitude. We seek to do the right thing. So these people, they can't. As much as they may want to, which really they, they don't want to. That's why they despise you. Because they see within you, what you what you have, they don't have. They don't have the minerals. Right? They don't have the integrity. Right? Traitors. Heady. They jump from it, um, individual to individual. Right? Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the most high. They are about the flesh. Right? Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Doesn't matter you have a big beard. A man may have a massive beard like Aaron. Right? But they deny the power of Yahweh Shai. From such turn away. Right? Move yourself from these individuals. Okay? Now we're going to go to Kings. Okay? Before we go to Kings. You know what? Let's go to Kings. Let's go to 1 Kings. 1 and 21. And this is basically going to go into Naboth's vineyard. Alright? And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel. Hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. Right? So basically, yes, he had a palace. He had a vineyard near the palace of Ahab the king at that time. And Ahab spake unto Naboth saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs. And even the, even the way he said it as well, give me the vineyard. Right? Greedy. Right? But wouldn't this a king? But it is near unto my house. Because it is near unto my house. Right? So you gotta you gotta you gotta picture this. Alright, he saw the vineyard of Naboth. And it was it was fitting because it was near his house. And it was obviously nice because he wouldn't have asked for it. And I will give thee for a better vineyard than it. So he said, no, I'll still, I'll, I'll still give you another vineyard. But I want this one. Right? And it's just overhanging my, my palace. Right? If it seemed good to thee, I will give thee worth it. Worth of it. In money. You've got to be careful of these people. They're treacherous. If you have something nice, if you have a nice, 
You may have a nice garden, whatever. Certain brothers, they have different um, circumstances. You may have a nice garden, nice house, whatever. You have people out here, they're bad minds. You may even have bad mind neighbours. They may see something you have. Oh, look, you can't put it past none of these people, right? People have very, very demonic intentions. If you're not in the scriptures, you have very demonic intentions. Verse 3, and Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord, Jehovah, forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. In other words, no. So that was an inheritance of Naboth, of his fathers. It was his land. And Ahab came into his house heavy. So that means he had demons on him. He didn't, he didn't like that response. Right? And that's the thing with narcs. When they don't get the response that they want, they rage. Raging, right? <laughs> and this pleased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. He laid and he laid him down upon his bed and he turned away his face and would eat no bread. He didn't want to eat. Just but just because of that. Just because someone told you no, right? And that's an, another science. See, this this is going to psychology, a lot of things. The narcs, they hate to be told no. So they haven't really grown up. It's like when you tell a child, no, don't do that. Stop. Right? No means no. Yeah means yeah, and no means no. But Jezebel, his wife, and um, brothers that not read the scriptures, you should know about Jezebel. The wicked woman that was known for what? Killing the prophets. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him. I said unto him, why is, the, why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? Okay. So Jezebel, she clocked that the husband was sad. And why are you eating no bread? And he said unto her, verse 6, because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? And arise and eat bread. Let thy heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Right? So she was thinking, well, I want to sort it out. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. And a wicked man, the scripture says a wicked man is given to a wicked woman. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. And sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city, dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in a letter saying, proclaim false and set Naboth on high among the people. She was scheming, right? She was scheming. This was like a ritual. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him, right? And these same individuals, they're back here again today as well. Right? And what is it with people that like to wear all black? I've never been down with that. People that like to wear all black. Right? A lot of where people wear all black is associated, yes, yeah, associated with dominance and witchcraft. Right? And set two men, sons of Belial before him to bear witness against him. So they were scheming on him. This was all being done in private. Saying that this is blaspheming the gods and the king, and then carrying him out and stone him that he may die. Because that's a sin worthy of death, what blasphemy. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them, they proclaimed the false. Right? So this is spiritual as well. Yes, you witches, you do you do know witches even fast as well. Witches and warlocks say fast. Right? They proclaimed the false and set Naboth on high among the people. They were setting him up. And they came and two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. Right? And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people. So basically, this was witchcraft going on, manipulation. Say, that's why you got to cut that spirit, rebuke that spirit straight away. Rebuke that Jezebel spirit in the name of Yahweh Shem Yahweh straight away. Because it's a spirit that seeks to overthrow saying Naboth did blaspheme the Most High and King, they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Because blasphemy is punishable by what death? 
Well, they said to Jadab Hussain, Nabakh is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Nabok was stoned and was dead that Jezebel said unto Ahab, Arise, take possession of the burial of Nabok, the Jezreelite which he refused to give thee for money. Now, poor Nabok is not alive but dead. They were scheming. You see how dangerous this you see how dangerous this spirit is. You see how dangerous this spirit is. Right? And that's the that was the spirit of Jezebel. Right? That was the spirit of Jezebel. It's a covetous spirit. It's a not spirit. So there's levels when it comes to narcissism. There's levels to it, right? But you got you got to be ready because you may even have some narcissist, demonic ass neighbors, which we know anyway that Yahushua controls everything, right? But these are wicked, wicked spirits, right? That want control, okay? But you, what's the best thing you do? We're going to continue as well. What's the best thing you do with a knock? You ignore them. You don't entertain them. Right? They What do they feed off? They feed off energy. These are very low vibrational beings. In other words, they don't, they don't, it's like they don't have a soul. So they need to feed off what delights someone that does have a soul. Right? These are dark spirits. Right? And the Jezebel spirit, out of all the demons, I believe that's the highest one within the hierarchy of demons. It is the Jezebel one. And the scriptures in Ephesians 6 and 11, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, put on the whole armour, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities in high places. And the highest level of principalities is that Jezebel spirit. Why? Because it seeks to overthrow, it seeks to dominate, it seeks to control. Right? And... It's a major one because this system, what does it need? It needs complete control. Esau needs complete control, complete dominance and so forth. So what does he use? He uses narcissists to try to keep people in place in order. But you can't do that with the elect. You cannot do that. Right? These people really, they're really weak-minded. So we're going to quickly go to Ecclesiastes 14. And 5. He that is evil to himself. Right? To whom will he be good? So good. Narc, narcs are not good to themselves. They, they do a lot of evil to themselves. Right? When they project that on someone else. That's why they, a lot of them, they're very passive aggressive. They're very passive aggressive. Right? But that's a reflection of them. That's, that's not you. If you're in a good mood and they need to do things like that, you know, <laughs> slam doors. You know, do shout. That's a projection of them. If they're, that's that's not you. That's why it says he that is even to himself. To whom will he be good? You're even to himself. You can't do good to anyone else. You're good to yourself. You can do good to others. Right? He shall not take pleasure in his goods. Right? So you may even attain goods and be a not, but you're not going to take pleasure in that. Right? Bear me just a minute. Fucking little idiot boy, kick over this thing. Hold on just a minute. Yeah, hey bro, he's free. You know? Maybe just a minute. I just had to deal with, see, the spirit don't lie. The spirit don't lie. Right, you even have narc neighbors, they come in all shorts, si sh sizes, forms. Right, and it says you got a big ass park down the road, and they choose to keep war around here. It's just distractions, it's just demons on people within people. Right, the devil knows his time is short, so he's using these vessels. See, there's so much to this truth, there's so much, and I hope you're being edified. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 14. Got a bunch of beta males, man. All right, let's go to Ecclesiastes 14. And where was we? Eight. The envious man have a wicked eye. Right? A wicked eye. Okay. Looking at you from the side of their eye, scoping you out. Okay. He turneth away his face and despiseth men. And this is the thing. I don't have a lot of friends. You, you don't need it. You don't need a lot. 
You don't need a lot of friends, right? Especially when you've got your house shy. Is it important to social? Yeah, of course, you still need to socialize, but you don't need a lot of friends. Narcs, they need a supply. They need people. If they don't have that supply, that's when they start panicking and demons start all twitching. Because right? they haven't worked on themselves. <coughs> so really, when you've got your house shy, you have everything and more. Right? It doesn't don't mean you're just a hermit. You still talk to people. But the narc is very, very, very insecure. He needs a supply. Okay. Once that supply mock runs out, the knock, I don't know, the knock might commit suicide. Okay. The envious man have a wicked eye. He turneth away his face and despiseth men. The covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. Right? Example. Ahab was not satisfied with his. He was a king. And he still got Naboth, what, killed? Just for his vineyard. Right? And he had a vineyard himself. But it was more fitting to his scenario because it was overhanging what? His palace. Right? A covetous man's eye, a covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion and the iniquity of the wicked frieth up his soul. Right? So that's the attributes. A covetous man is never going to be satisfied. He's going to want more, more, more and more. Stop buying. And if you are buying, if you've got a lot, you can give that to someone else. You know, or give to charity or whatever. But they're never satisfied. They're always looking for their next fix. Like a drug addict. Right? A wicked eye every of his bread and is a nigger at, the, at his table. Who does this remind you of? Judas Iscariot. Right? He was a nigger at the table. He dipped his hand in the sock first. Yahushua said, he that dipped with his hand in the, in the sock first, he should be, what, betray me? My son, according to that ability, do good things to serve. Give the Lord his offering. So the scriptures go into, it goes into everything, pretty much everything. Right? We're going back to 1 Kings 20, where was we? 21 and... And this is when Naboth had passed. Verse 21 and 16. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead. And Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth. The Jezreelites. To take the possession of it. And the word of the Lord Jehoshaphat came to Elijah. To a Tishbite. Saying. Right? And Elijah was very, 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 very austere. Right? Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is going down to possess it. Right? So the word got back to Elijah. Right? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thou saith the Lord, thou hast killed and also taken possession. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thou saith the Lord, Jehovah in the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick the blood of even thine. So he was pronouncing the judgment of Ahab. But the thing is, the thing is, because Ahab, he did humble himself, he didn't die because he humbled himself. But that judgment was going to come upon what his sons, right? And Ahab said unto Elijah, Hast thou found me, O oh, my enemy? Become convicted. And he answered, I have found you because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Right? So we went to that by the Bashar. Jump straight to verse 29. See us how then Ahab humbled himself. Right? Before me, because he humbled himself before me. I will not bring the evil in his days. You see how merciful Yahushai is. So Ahab done all that. But he didn't suffer, he didn't suffer the judgment. He was brought upon his offspring. You see how merciful Yahushai is? Because he repented. But in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. And when you go to the previous chapter, you go into what that evil that was brought upon his son's house. Right? But it shows you the main premise of this lesson is be very, 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 very careful. And this world, this system is run by narcs. Presidents. Your presidents, they're not. Your um your prime ministers, your mayors are narcs, right? Believe it or not, yeah, they're, they're borderline psychopaths. A lot of military men, 
to do what they have to to do what they do. They're psychopaths to to be to to shoot to go to Syria, Afghanistan, shoot children and so forth and do all this stuff. It's psychopathic. A lot of the rulers of this society are psychopathic. They're narcs, right? Okay, whether you want to believe it or not, and even the ordinary people on down, right? Scripture says, "So is the ruler is, so are the people." Right? So with Lord willing, this was edifying. Until the next time. Shalom. Shalom.